Hey, nobody's perfect. And the minute you stop trying to improve yourself is the moment you start being complacent in the way you do things. We're only prefacing this fact because we suck as DMs. I mean, sometimes. We, we think we're pretty great. But the thing is, we are always trying to get better. What we're talking about today is taking a look at the man, woman in the mirror and self-reflecting. Who am I? Why am I so bad? We're talking about being perceptive about your behaviors as a GM or as a player. Give yourself some feedback on what you think you might be doing wrong, what you think you could do better. We're gonna use the new year as just an excuse for us to experiment and sort of try new things, maybe as game masters or if we're starting a new campaign, maybe switching up our play styles a little bit. Now's the time to do it. Why do you suck? my energy has not where it needs to be. And this isn't something that was always the case. I was running us through uh, the Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, and I had almost this out of body experience where I could almost look at the table, I was rising above, and I was just sort of watching myself sit there, and everybody seemed to be having an okay time. Going through the motions. Everything was going through the motions. I was sitting there, I was pontificating. But it wasn't what it could be. Yeah. I used to be a way more energetic game master and judge and it's just not there and I blame sort of the pandemic for this because I got really used to sitting down at a computer my personal fix I've sort of had a little time to reflect upon this is I need to stand up I want to stand up the entire session yeah. I want to be on my feet I want to be moving around the table get on your feet meow. <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's okay <laughs> I want that energy level back. I'm a yeah. much better game master when I'm on my feet, when I'm, you know, I'm a terror around the table. I'm, my arms are swinging, my, my Italian gesticulations are happening. <laughs> That's my fix for doing that. I need to get back to that. That's such a great point. I have been so affected by the pandemic as well myself. I am such an in-person game master. Mm -hmm. I need to react off of players. I need to see yeah. their face, their emotions. Mm -hmm. It's hard playing online when you have a bunch of blank screens. Mm -hmm. And while I don't force players online to have a video going, I just love it. And I always have mine going to encourage them to turn theirs on, right? But it's not the same if I can't get feedback. Mm -hmm. Instant feedback on how players are playing. And it excites me at a table during a session too. So remote play has been hard for me. Mm -hmm. And that's where one place where I want to improve is I just want to practice more remote play and try to find substitutions for what I did in person and experiment with remote ways to recreate those effects like standing up. I feel like I could even stand up at a standing desk and just me standing up mm -hmm has the right blood fill for my energy level to be up. Mm -hmm. I always stand up during combat. Yep. I always make the division of sitting down during the table during exploration and any kind of role playing, right? But if as soon as excitement peaks, I stand up mm -hmm. combat or any kind of uh, exciting role playing encounter there might be. But yeah, it's just practicing more remote techniques mm -hmm. is on my list. It's literally for me, it's almost twice the amount of prep uh, because you have to prep all of the table, virtual tabletop stuff on top of your normal prep for yeah. me, and that's... If you're not doing theater of the mind, you're expected to come out with these elaborate battle yep. maps on Rule 20 and have assets ready and mm -hmm. uh, maybe have some things in the journal to toss at your players every now and again. And, yep. Um, yeah. Which is fun. Yeah. You know, that, that that's what piques players' engagement yeah. and stuff, is really you throw this journal that you can actually read yeah. and everyone can see it. But then it's like, it's awkward because like, can you guys see that? Can, you know, can, can, you, can you see that? <laughs> All the technical difficulties that come with it just aren't a well, piece you're, of... You're an immersive gamer. Yes. So anytime that anything that breaks your immersion, you're just like... <laughs> and I know, I know that about you. You just, you, you don't want that... Wait. You don't want that to be destroyed. No. And in the technical, the technical side of remote play, I can see, yeah, that's... But like you said, you just gotta do it more. Yes. My main focus this year will also be learning to run one-shots quickly. I feel my pacing has improved 
over the last few years. You need to know when to pinpoint those lulls mm -hmm. and when players are becoming bored with something or even when I'm becoming bored with something. <laughs> if I'm becoming bored, then players will start becoming bored. I've learned to recognize that earlier and it can yeah. just be like, okay, well, uh, that NPC closes up shop. Well, that's that's the end for the day. You're gonna have to get out. All right, mm -hmm. I, I gotta close up. You know, and you pivot, pushing players you, along. Yeah, you pivot to a different pillar. Yes, because you've mentioned that that sort of excites you when you go from like role playing to maybe there's a a chase sequence or something that's immediately yes. picking up the pace and just changing what's happening at the table. As a player, I feel stale in any one pillar at any one time. If we're in the middle of combat and it takes the entire session. I'm okay with that. But as long as next section we get to do something different, that piques me, you know? But yep. during three hours and doing combat the whole time is hard for me. I'm an ADD gamer. Mm -hmm. I'm a Twitch gamer, video gamer, and I play Smash Brothers because I need instant gratification in fights. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's just me as a player. That and I also, think of. I wanted to just increase my repertoire of learning rules and new rule systems. Um, Welcome to my world, Kamo. I read a lot of rule systems. It's scary. <laughs> but I but I'm a I'm a junkie. Yeah. Like I I have so many different games. But thankfully we thankfully we have this YouTube channel to start going through some of them. So uh, be on the lookout for that. What about player stuff? Yeah, if I'm being introspective here, thinking about player stuff, uh, believe it or not, my biggest flaw as a player is I'm sometimes like the court jester at the table. Which is, you really wouldn't think so because like a game master should know better. Yeah. But. Especially if you pick a character that is the comedic relief. And not even that. Like sometimes I'm the guy that's just like, oh, hey, like it's like you're really trying to set the mood and it's scary and yeah. this and that. And like I'm just the one that I, I'm making an out of character. I'm As a player, mm -hmm. I'm just like cracking a joke. Being a goof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I love getting people to laugh. <laughs> and I know you do too. Yeah. There's no better feeling. Um, you know, Part of playing the game is just having fun anyway and having laughs. Of course, of course. Part of me is just like, all right, you're, you do this. You, you're the one running games a lot of the times. Like, just chin up. You can be a character that has pithy dialogue mm -hmm. and is a little bit of a comedic relief character, but do it in a way that makes sense for your role playing, yeah, and not just being like you're like, oh, you're welcome to the the lair of D, and I'm like, D's nuts, yeah, D's nuts, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and you're like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> I feel like every player does that. It, of course, I know, but I, but it's I wouldn't want it to happen to me as a game master. Yeah. The problem that I feel like is too much. When you're a game master and you're sitting there and you're trying to get through an adventure and you want people to be invested into it mm -hmm. and all one person can do is continuously crack jokes because they're anxious yep. or whatever, they feel like they need to break the tension all the time. That's... No, I don't do that. And you're that. not that. No, I don't do you're that. You're far from that. But it is, it's just, it's a bad habit that I just kind of want to really just sort of stamp out this year. Get rid of for good, and I'll pick up something else worse. You know, no like... more laughter. <laughs> <laughs> As a player, I feel like I'm a great player because I've learned to be a good player through being a game master. Mm -hmm. Because I know what annoys me as being a game master, and I mostly stop those behaviors. Mm -hmm. But I find that through a long period of time, through a long session, I start to lose the defenses that I have. And I can start being a dick <laughs> yep. because I am the game master player. Mm -hmm. And while most of the time I don't hog the spotlight, I like to share the spotlight. I move the story along for the game master at hand. But when I get to a point, again, where like my immersion is broken, mm -hmm. I have a hard time holding back and I just need to like shut my mouth. <laughs> you know, instead I'm um, like, the city's burning down and, and we're having a conversation about the cost of bread and uh, you know, how to sell bread from this bread vendor and the city's burning. <laughs> and, and this conversation has broken my immersion and it doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. Um, then, uh, you know, my character will either say something in character, pretty witty to the situation and uh, passive aggressive, but that's what I gotta be careful of. That makes sense. You know, I've never noticed it. Um, 
if you've been playing in my game, so maybe I'm... I'm trying to think if there is, it wasn't. I'm instance. keeping you appeased <laughs> and immersed. <laughs> Feed the camo monster, otherwise he, he gets feisty. Well, how will you fix that? How will you f just, is it just sort of, you just try um, to bring that in? How do I fix it? I, I, I gotta be, I, you know what, I gotta turn it into something different, right? Instead of like holding it in, because like, that's never good. <laughs> I, you turn it into something more uh, constructive. Sure. So, uh, rather turn it into something that I could role play and mm -hmm. not be so passive aggressive with, just to move the story along or or buy into it and just buy into the silliness instead of being so hooked on being immersed and uh, joining, you know, the realism of it. If you want to get out in the fun with us, you know, obviously we're we're kind of joking here. We're poking fun at ourselves. We're not perfect. We're always trying to get better, but if you want to be like us and improve, uh, maybe ask yourself some of the following questions and self-reflect so you can start experimenting and improving and getting better as players and game masters. Okay. First question, do you argue with other players mm. or the game master? Is that something you do pretty frequently? Are you a game master and you notice your distracted players? Um, are you a player and you notice a distracted game master? Here's an easy one. Are you having fun? Are your players having fun? Mm. It's usually pretty easy to tell if this is happening. Yeah, you can notice pretty quickly. <laughs> I mean, are they uh, not paying attention in person? They'll be on their phones. Uh, remotely, they'll be quiet. Dead <laughs> silent. <laughs> you won't hear anything and you're like... Uh, you there? Hey, Charlie? Steve? Last question would be, are you receiving unsolicited feedback about your game master style, about your role-playing uh, style as a player? Mm -hmm. um, not just role-playing, but like how you play as a player. Good stuff. Yeah. You know, like good or bad. Like when I've had really great sessions, sometimes I get texts from multiple people afterwards and be like, dude, that was a blast. Yeah. Oh, this encounter was so crazy. How the hell did you think of that? You had a really good session like when you were as a player, I'd be like, dude, when you did that, I was like loving it. Like, just stuff like that. Like, yeah. it'll like trust me. It's it's not prompted. It's just people are kind of gushing about everything that happened in the session because when you have those like Goldilocks sessions where everything is just right there, it's perfect, and the game master is kicking it off, and the players are engaged, stories popping off. Yeah. People being funny and coming up with exciting ways to do oh, things. Oh, yes. It's, like, it's, oh, that was so cool. It's like a natural high. It's why we play the game. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to explain to people. That's good confirmation that you're doing things right. Yes. Right. If you're getting that kind of stuff, you're probably in the right direction. And you find your strengths. Don't ever think you're perfect, because no. we're certainly not. Mm -hmm. Just because we're sitting here yapping to you guys and we have a YouTube channel, we're not gods. We're not perfect. Yeah, we just like to talk about this stuff. We love these games and we love we love having conversations with y'all about them is really what it boils down to that's why we want to hear what your game master and player resolutions are this year the new me in 2023 who are you what are you doing to get better we want to know thanks for watching everybody we appreciate you have a good 2023 play as many different role-playing games as you can get freaky deaky with your shelves Pull off them dusty tomes and play something off the beaten path. A lot more new and surprising content coming out from us in the next couple of weeks. Like, subscribe to Basic Liches for more. Bye-bye. Later, Liches.